Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. This is very real. Fantastic. This drug is dangerous. Wrong. You cannot play with it. It's not funny. It's, it's not something to laugh about. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Shut your little punk ass up. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. Learn. Welcome to the Autoflower Podcast, where we chat with growers, breeders, and anyone relevant to the Autoflower cannabis community. I'm Chad. I'm a fellow Autoflower home grower, and you're listening to episode 65, and I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Big shout out to new members Travis and Jordan, who joined the Flowering Club tier on Patreon. Thank you both for your support. Enjoy your free seeds. Thank you so much. If you're interested in joining the Patreon community, visit patreon.com slash autoflowerpodcast to learn more. Our guest this week is Napier8150 from Instagram. I asked him to come on being that he offers yet another way of organic growing that we haven't covered yet. He agreed, but he was hesitant to show himself on video, so I actually offered to disguise myself with him, which is why you'll see me wearing a wig and my wife's sunglasses if you happen to be watching on YouTube. He grows with organic bottled nutrients by a company called Foop. From what I understand, that's fertilizer made using fish poop. When it comes to organic growing, there's like several methods to choose from. And my goal is to try and cover as many of those methods as possible. We've covered some organic styles, such as growing in do-it-yourself super soil on episode 62. We covered amended cocoa coir on episode 61. Super soil concentrate on episodes 59 and 54. We dabbed a little bit into Korean natural farming on episode 45, outdoor organic growing on episode 44, and there's one or two others, I believe. I plan on continuing this trend in the near future with conversations about living soil beds, like no-till living soil beds with earthworms and mites and isopods and cover crop and all this stuff. I also want to cover more and go a little more in depth with Korean natural farming. So anyway, this episode in particular provides yet another avenue for you to chew on and to consider when it comes to making a choice in growing organically. Before we hop into the conversation, I'd like to quickly thank the companies who partner with me to help support the podcast. Autopot USA, who offers amazing, affordable, simple, gravity-fed automatic watering systems. Use the code AFPODCAST at checkout on their website, autopot-usa, to save 10% on all their products. AC Infinity, who offers inline fans, carbon filters, lights, tents, and other top-of-the-line products. Save 15% on AC Infinity products by using the code AFPODCAST at checkout on their website, acinfinity.com. And Nature's Living Soil, who offers organic super soil concentrates that can be mixed with your typical potting soil or cocoa coir to create an organic water-only medium. Use the code AUTOFLOWERPODCAST15 to save 15% on their products at their website, naturesLivingSoil.com. So let's go ahead and get to it. Please welcome to the Autoflower Podcast, Napier8150. Maybe just like give us a little introduction, man. Um, I, I was... I asked you to come on here because your plants are so beautiful and uh, because you're growing a certain way, um, you're growing organically, kind of using bottled organic nutrients, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and because in some recent episodes, I've been trying to like cover the whole like spectrum of growing organically, you know, like cocoa with amendments, 
like super soil with, you know, potting soil, um, just different ways to do it, you know? And so this is just yet another one of those ways. So I'm really stoked to have you on and you're a great grower, man. And I know you've only been growing for just, you know, approaching like two years now, but, um, yeah, man, you're a great grower. So, uh, maybe just give us a background dude into like how you, how you got started into growing the way that you're growing. No, well, for one, I'm going to thank you for the kind words, brother. I uh, appreciate that. I really have come a little ways. I still got a long ways to go, but I uh, started out uh, actually April 1st, uh, 19 months or well, about 20 months ago was my start date. It was uh, THC bomb autos from bomb seeds. And I ordered these things from across the pond. And I didn't know I could just like here in the U.S., like just really go look and I would just find the same thing. So I went ahead and uh, got them in. I used Happy Frog Ocean Forest this this first time. And I went in there and I was using full-on salt. So I didn't know nothing about cutting. These plants were only like 10 inches tall. And, oh, they were rough. Oh. Uh, but uh, then I ran across the auto flower show and fire buds. And I went through that first year of the classes. And, well, what did I do? I... Had a plant, I studied it. It was the only one to live out of uh, like eight. <clears throat> so, so then I, I kind of got pissed. <laughs> and then I did one more photo grow because I go photo grow, auto grow, photo grow. And that way I can try to keep learning both and still keep it kind of fresh in my head. And I used the salts. I'm not going to name their name. Um, grew some really, really good great photos but i listened to the directions and it says oh dude don't have to flush and that was it and i went looking for something different tried m3 michigan made mix uh that's a pretty good soil i didn't top on it and that's when i started bringing in the foop i got a trial pack and now i use happy frog soil and the food, it's, I don't know, it's, the shit's awesome. I can't say enough for food canna. Yeah, you know what, I'm pretty um, new to, I, I just uh, kind of found out who they were um, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. And, uh, and then I saw you using it too, and it just kind of clicked. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. But um, yeah, so what is foop i mean i'm not obviously not trying to make an episode all about that oh. or anything but uh could you just give us a rundown of what you're using like what is it how does it set up is it like in just different you have like a veg and a, and a yeah bloom. you got here i i got this here which is uh the can of I believe one can of veg one so you have can of veg one and two and uh can of bloom one and two and then you have sweetener so there's you know five jugs but for the veg you only use three and then for flour you only use three okay uh, it's pretty simple it's basically like fish poop um it is omri listed uh that was one of the big things too because the salt killed my bags mm. uh washing them out was a pain in my ass no i'm cool and this stuff yeah it gets like mucked down into the trays but the the smell in there is much better. I mm -hmm. mean, the, the food itself it don't smell the greatest, but everything this run it's been just oh man, God, I just want to go in there and just hug everything <laughs> and lick it. Oh yeah, oh uh, that's awesome, dude. So maybe take us through one of your grows. So you're just starting in in Fox Farm Happy Frog soil and. So are you, you germinating directly in the soil? What's your uh, germination method? Basically, I'll throw some seeds and let them soak in water for about eight hours. And depending on like the dumpster punch, I went 50-50 peroxide and water, but I still soaked them eight hours. Uh, and then I'll go and run them out, put them in bags or solo cups. I'm going to try to get out of doing the transplant thing altogether. It's just a hassle. Uh, mm. At least in my part, it is uh, too much time wasted. And then instead of messing with the plant, just let it go. Uh, but 
I'll generally mix up my soil with some mycos or some uh, dynamico, whatever I have on hand, and do just pop them in there and just water them gently. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at what point do you usually start introducing the foop? Uh, about two weeks in, I'll start introducing that and I'll start like half a dose to a quarter dose of uh, MBX grows uh, microbes. Oh, okay. So you're adding yeah. microbes and organic nutrients. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Cause then you're giving something, you're just boosting the biological life in that, uh, in that happy frog, which is, which is pretty low. It, it's not inert. It's not like, it's not like it's cocoa or it doesn't have anything, but happy frog is like, it's pretty safe to plant, you know, sensitive seedlings and things like, like microgreens and stuff like that. And happy frog, you know, cause it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't, it's not going to burn your plants as opposed to like their ocean forest, which I've never had a plant or a seedling burnt in ocean forest myself, but people say that it's too hot. Um, but that's got a little bit more in it. I think a little bit more, maybe microbial activity and a little mm -hmm. more, uh, plant available nutrients. Um, is there a reason you choose happy frog? Is it cause it's a little less hot, so to speak? Actually, I, I initially went to happy frog because that's what the local store up the road has. And I mean, I was getting it for like 15 bucks a bag when I started getting it. So it was just convenient. And then I see everybody jumping on different trains. I'm just like, no, I better stay the course. Uh, and so I, I'm going to stay the course with this because I'm going to see, I'm actually going to do another photo grow back to back with this one because I'll, I got some stuff going on and I'm going to do the same exact thing and I'm going to see exactly what I get. Um, one of the things I don't do that FOOP will tell you to do with their stuff is when you pH it, pH it between 6264. I threw that out the window. I pH at 66. Hmm. Uh, and everything has stayed pretty happy. I do have some droop. I have some plants in there that I think the air conditioner and the fans were hitting probably a little too much, kind of made them group goofy. Mm -hmm. But uh, the rest of them in there, my God, that, that poop dollar I took a pick of this morning. I just couldn't stop looking at it. <laughs> I've no, never really? seen, I've never ever had color come out like that. Oh, and wow. and I'm also messing with the temps with it too. I've been reading up on that and trying to do some different stuff. Mm. Yeah. So in vet, so in two weeks in, you start introducing the both micro. What microbes are you using? Uh, NVX uh, grows this stuff. Oh, here. that's right. You said. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, then so you're doing that at at uh, you said quarter to half. Yeah, strength? quarter to half. I introduce them really low. Mm-hmm. And just, uh, I'll wait then and give it about another uh, two weeks and then I'll hit it with a full dose. And then from there on out, it's full dose. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, so with the FOOP stuff, you're, you're introducing the, the veg nutrient and that's three different uh, bottles that yeah. you're, you're adding. And then are you yeah. starting, starting that out at, at a quarter or half? No, I'm starting it out by, by what they say it goes. Uh I'll go to that week and actually I'll ramp it up because uh, one of the things I believe I seen, which was part of the thing it sold is you can't basically the way this is made is it won't burn your plants. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I went right to it and just, I went ahead and I hit them with it and there's no issues. That's, that's really cool, man. I love that idea. So you just start out hundred percent because it's really, it's probably not, it's probably different. It's obviously different than a salt based nutrient. That's just kind of like injecting an IV into your plants and giving it nutrients. You know, this is more of an organic approach where there's, is there available nutrients in it for your plant? Do you know, is it both? It's like available nutrients and organic well, it's, matter. It's got like, uh, like ba this base nutrients and then, uh, micronutrients. It's got a lot of different stuff in it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still like, I'm new. I'm still trying to like take a lot of stuff in, Yeah. but ba basically <laughs> it was all about looking at my plants and following my plants and what they're, th what they're showing. Mm -hmm. Um, if I was probably using salt this run, I probably would have at least burned one of the plants down. Mm -hmm. 
and this puts them all on a fair playing level. And yeah, everything's been pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. I think one of the benefits to that too, is like, <clears throat> you know, when you've got, if you're running multiple different strains, sometimes like you might have one strain that's super sensitive compared to this strain over here, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's, that's what I don't like about, you know, synthetic growing with, unless I'm running a tent with all the same genetics or something or all this, you know, the same cultivar, um, then it's difficult. Cause like, even right now I'm running one of my tents, I'm just growing with some mega crop. Um, and I don't even know why I made the decision to do that. I just did, <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't matter. It's still, it's all good. But so I'm growing that tent with mega crop and it's like, I've got a few in a few different stages, you know, I've got some, some that are like two weeks old. I've got some that are like four weeks old. And then it's like, I can't feed those the same, you know, and even the ones that are two weeks old, I've got three of them that are like the same uh, age. And even those ones, it's like, they're different cultivars. So when I feed them, like one of them might react a little bit differently than the other one. And then if you get a sensitive one, then you got to really change things up. And so next thing you know, you're having to mix like these small batches of kind of customized strength nutrients for different plants. At least that's been my experience anyways, you know, maybe I just suck, but that that's just kind of how it went for me. So for me, I like the idea of being able to just mix stuff up like you're doing. Mm -hmm. and uh being able to just kind of feed them to all the plants and it just doesn't really matter yeah well you know and one of the other things that it, it, it just clicked in my head about what also kind of pissed me off about the salts i was using i was growing a triangle pupil for mass medical and it was probably the biggest photo i've ever grew i mean that thing was way up there and it was coming in nice and it got nitrogen nitrogen toxicity and it just killed it like the mm -hmm. taste, uh, no, I had to toss the whole damn thing. I was so pissed, but, uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of salt. I just, I'll find other ways. I can't Poop also is actually good because I'm not out in the middle of my driveway mixing anything up. Uh, you know, we, we've got a quiet neighborhood and I like to keep it that way to make mm -hmm. people drive by seeing me out there doing some weird shit. And the next thing I know, I'm getting a knock at the door. Yeah, they probably already think I'm wacko enough half the time when I'm outside hiring a kite. Oh, that's funny. So you make you're mixing these three things up, and so you're just following the directions on the bottle, basically. And it's yeah. just easy peasy, man. You're just following the directions. It's organic. They're not really going to burn your plants. You don't have to yeah. worry too much. You just kind of make sure that your pH is locked in, and uh, you just feed away. So are you feeding every time you water? Yes. Um, this is what's really cool. And, uh, I don't know if I was just born yesterday or something. <laughs> I started using my sprayer and, uh, yeah, I, I, I use it every time and it says recommended for best results use every time. And I have nine, five gallon pots and I can take two gallons of this mixture out and I water everybody down and have a little bit of runoff. So, I did not know using a sprayer was going to start saving me all kinds of water. So yeah, it was something I learned and I'm like, okay, this works even better. So yeah, I use it every single time I throw Cali mag in it every time. And yeah, I use microbes once a week, uh, Saturdays or Sundays is when they get their, their drink of the microbes. And I, my light, uh, I'm pretty happy with the light so far. I wish they were a little more intense because now I see some colors coming out and, but still I'm happy. Uh, Mars Hydro has done a pretty good job for what I was able to purchase, which I try to keep my grow really cheap Same. as cheap as possible. Yeah. Is that what you're running is Mars Hydro? Which one? Yeah. I got uh, two of the TSW 2000s in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like, I like the Mars Hydro lights that I have. I have the TSL 2000s. I have two of them in each one of my two by fours. They're pretty good, man. They work pretty good, but I'm finding that I'm <clears throat> burning the crap out of my plants recently. Oh, so wow. I've started hiking my light up farther. Yeah. And then I've been digging, diving into kind of all this, this DLI and PPFD calculations and stuff like that. And so it's a, it's a rabbit hole, man. But, um, yeah, but yeah, dude, I, 
I, I try to, I do the same thing, man. I try to like keep it cheap as possible. You know, I even just, just started like get giving another attempt at composting and, um, I'm going to try to make some, uh, some solutions like with charred eggshells and charred bones to make some calcium and phosphorus solutions that are readily available for your plant, you know, so if you need an organic way to really, you know, give it a boost. Um, but I mean, what you're using would do, do the same thing. So, um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, is that stuff expensive talking about a little um, bit about money? I mean, is it super expensive? I went and started buying gallon jugs because if you basically hit, buy the gallon you're basically well those little boxes they're, it's they're kind of quarts so basically you're paying for two quarts getting four quarts if you buy it by the gallon mm -hmm. um and i buy all of it like that uh let's say i spent about 250 um but i'm still like <laughs> i'm barely into these now see if i if i run autos i'll i change the feed up i yeah i back it down do you uh yeah, I do. I, it's just, it's, it's consciously me just trying to save money. Mm -hmm. And I just grew out a great bud mixed uh, packed bean for the auto flower class, the auto flower shows class. Mm -hmm. And dude, I, I just found a jar of that this morning and got into it. And oh my God. Oh, so frosty. I got a picture I'm going to post later of it. I'm just, oh, nice. I, was, I was proud of it good man yeah you should be it's, yeah it's, and and it, that's the thing man it's like i'm growing for me mm -hmm. so to me all them little ladies out there you know they were man i love them to death but they're all mine 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's right but, uh yeah i i don't i don't get rid of my stuff i don't know i'm already like you know in in, in what you call prohibition land mm -hmm. you know why make it worse yeah yeah. So yeah. if anyone's wondering why um, we're both dressed up and I'm dressed up so goofy with a yeah. wig and my wife's sunglasses, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's because I'm willing to uh, to be discreet with you, man, to make the guests feel comfortable to come on here and chat. So oh, hell yeah. Appreciate you even coming on, dude. So when you're growing autos, what strength are you using that food? I usually cut it down to about a half. OK, through the whole grow. Yeah. OK. And, um, so you're the veg cycle you're doing. And, and when you do start them, are you doing half like right away? I will, I'll let them get about two, three weeks. And then, and then that's when I start hitting them. Now, when I start to go into flower, when they hit those three flowers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, once they get so far up and I don't think they're going to get any taller, I'll go half and half veg and, uh, the can of bloom, uh, and I read something about that on one of FastBud's website things. So I, I tried it out and it worked. Uh, oh, you read about what, what, what is that? It was, it was like when they were, uh, they have a blog that was kind of explaining how to grow an auto flower. Uh -huh. And they said certain notes, like try to go like half veg and half uh, bloom. When you're going into flower, it helps them in some so, way. And like after the stretch, like when the stretch is finished. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait until you're done, but kind of keep giving them that for a little bit. And then at the end, because, well, uh, what was, that? I've heard that auto flowers have this, what natural act to hurry up and fade really quickly. Sometimes mm -hmm. like they die off anyway. Uh, I probably sound stupid cause I'm not really good with my words, but oh, man, I've noticed that every time I grow an auto flower for the most part, until I started doing that half and half for a little bit, they yellowed off really fast and they just looked ugly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still good quality smoke, but it, they just looked funky. And mm -hmm. I mean, bag appeal was like zero. I wouldn't even buy mm -hmm. I, No, I wouldn't buy that for myself. <laughs> but I mean, it's still really good stuff. It's just, you know, it's just, yeah, ugly. Mm -hmm. But that's where I've learned. Okay. So when the stretch is over, then you're still right. Like right when the stretch ends, you're still at that half, half like veg bloom ratio. Yeah. And yeah. then do you start to kind of taper it off from well, there I'll, and go more into bloom? Depending on where, where the plant is, I'll just straight cut it off and go straight off into the bloom. Mm -hmm. Because generally once you get so far, it's only within a matter of weeks anyway, before it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, depending on which strain you got, because I had a <laughs> I had an anvil go 120 days and no, it shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's what that was part of my learning experience. Yeah, I, I do. I give them that half and half. And then once I see that they're not doing really any any stretching or anything, that's when I'll just give them like a week and then cut them off and then boom, straight bloom the rest of the way out. Okay. And then you just watch them puppies fatten up, huh? Oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, it, it's I love going in. Uh, right now, that golden pineapple, I, I can't help myself. I keep going in there and every time I go in, I got to rub the stem. Oh yeah, it, ha- it has that pupil smell to it, mm. and it, it just it's it smells just like the indigo grapes, and it's just like oh geez, I start slobbering, <laughs> and, and and then and then and then it's pretty much my fingers are ruined. And I can't check anybody else. Uh, so I just imagine if somebody sees me walking out garage smelling my fingers, like what the f- was he doing? <laughs> <laughs> so are you? And then so through the whole thing, you're still adding the the microbes every once a week i yeah i will do the microbes um up until i decide i'm gonna go ahead and cut everything off uh and i usually just water twice that's kind of my flush uh just water I don't without do, I don't, just without your nutrient mix yeah there'll be nothing in there i'll just ph it run it through um because i do i do try to i want to see fade and i'm trying to figure that one out and this girl, I'm kind of figuring out temps have a little bit to do with it, mm. but I'm still learning. I'm loving every freaking minute of it. <laughs> Man, it, uh, that's what I love about it, dude, is the rabbit holes that I'm able to kind of go down with it, you know? And I just, I, I have go through seasons where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm really into this or I'm really into that. Lately, I'm just fascinated with how it operates below the soil and microbial life and fungi and just crazy stuff, dude, really crazy stuff. Um, I just love it, man. I love learning all about it. And then learning about the plant itself, the history of the plant, like how it all works, you know, it's, it's amazing, dude. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Like when you really, if you can stop and pause to like, cause it's cool enough that you're able to grow. Right. But if you can, if you're growing and you can also just kind of hit the pause button, man, and stop and like, just soak up the moment of what's going on, man. Like what is actually happening, whether you're feeding synthetic or you're growing organic either way, man, it's still fascinating. Like the way that the plant uptakes nutrients and works with the medium that it's in. And, and it's just cool, man. It's just awesome, dude. It's this, the science behind it, I guess, is just fascinating to me. And there's always something to learn. There's always some grower somewhere doing something a certain way that you don't see a whole lot of other people doing. And, you know, like I interviewed, um, a soil scientist, um, last night and, you know, she was like telling me about carbonated, spring water how the science and the in the scientific community it's looking like carbonated spring water is like the go-to for like plant growth especially indoors because that co2 that's in there is just it's crazy man it's just cool stuff dude i love it yes yeah i've never heard anything like that i just recently got ed rosenthal the new uh hand grower book and i'm I'm trying to get some time where I can sit down and put my nose in it. Um, I want to read about different ways. Um, I got a ways off. I'm trying to just channel in with the soil. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, and that's my focus is to learn, learn more about that. Uh, Ari from uh, Dynamico, he had a, a thing and I was listening to him and it got me interested in trying to learn about the different mycorrhizae and all that. Yeah. All, all the stuff down in the soil. If I take care of that, then, you know, the rest kind of take care of itself. You you just got to baby the plant. Yeah, that's what I love about growing organically, you know, is you just kind of pay attention to the soil and you let the plant do its thing with its relationship with that, with the soil and with what's going on in there. You know, Um, I like that, that, that version of it over um, being in total control with like synthetics and a hydro grow or something. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it by any means. If that's your thing, then, you know, that's awesome, dude. I'm still fascinated by it. It's just not my, 
it's just not my choice, I guess, of my own personal way to do it. Cause I'm more interested in, in, you know, the more organic side with all this stuff that's happening in the roots and, and everything like that. So you, so you do, you cut the nutrients off like a couple of weeks before. Yeah. About 10 harvest. days, about 10 days. I mean, okay. that's plenty of time to go and put water and I don't go crazy. I did that one time. I put like 20 gallons of water to a five gallon pot just to try <laughs> to get all that to make sure it was running clear. And I just, no, I was like, never again. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the other good thing to the food. Uh, it seems to, when you run water, just run water down. It Everything's going to run its natural course, no matter what. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that, and that's what makes it so easy. I just, you know, I'll use it and follow the plants and they'll tell me when they're ready. And, mm-hmm. and now that I see the fades, I just kind of hope they would stay that way for a while, but I'm ready to see the next phase of the fades and see what else uh, turns up. I, that's one thing I've learned since I've started growing like reg seeds. Like I, I never started out that way. I, I just wanted to make it easy. And then now I'm, doing the reg seeds i'm like there's a whole new world here mm. and this but but yeah using the food uh is it's just for me it's definitely easier it's more discreet and it, it for what i do it's cheap yeah so it doesn't smell or anything like that you it, do, it, it does have a kind of a smell well it smells kind of like a tea leaf to me i don't know why but then like the number twos man they get that freaking just that gross smell but hey, it's all good. The plants love that shit. They drink it right up. Yeah, usually stuff that stinks to us is is oftentimes good for our plants, like you know, compost and manure. <laughs> you yeah, know, like all this, all that stuff. You know, like that nature's living soil stuff. Dude, that stuff stinks so bad. And there's just all you know, like a, any like fish fertilizers and stuff. Like that stuff reeks, dude. But yeah, it's great for your plants. Yeah, even, I mean, even the MBS has got to like that weird smell to it, too. Mm-hmm. And it, but I've gotten so used to it. It's just, man, the only thing I smell is sweetness now, because every time I go out there, I'll be out there like today. I got to go out there and do some updates for everything. Uh, I try, I've been trying to post now that I went public uh, more. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's mainly for like if there's new growers, they'll get a chance to see it. It, it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, you just got to make sure your genetics, you know, get your lights and just make sure you're doing everything as you're supposed to mm-hmm. you know, follow, follow, follow direction. Hey, it's not that hard. I mean, once you get used to it, then fine tune it. Yeah, it's kind of like anything, right? Like there's a learning curve to anything. There's a learning curve. If you want to learn to make lasagna, like you got to get in the kitchen and you got to start practice and making it before you perfect it you know you can read a book about it and that's and that's great and it's beneficial and you can watch other people make lasagna but if you want to get good at it yourself you got to start and you just get in the kitchen you start making it man and then you're like oh well you know in my kitchen you know i gotta do this because this might happen and you know that's kind of a dumb analogy but you get what i'm saying dude like with 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 growing you just got to start and, you know, just keep it basic. I think if you're going to, for beginners, like just start out keeping it basic, you know, and, uh, and just fine tune it from there based off of not only your experience and, and what you're seeing and what the results that you desire are, but also, you know, just, just based off of what interests you and, and what feels good to you. You know, it's one thing isn't going to be good for everybody. You know, so even people listening to this might go, why, why would you pay money for organic stuff? And it's like, well, because there's a place for that. And there's people who, who want to do that. You know what I mean? If that's what you like and that's what you enjoy, then (laughs) then there's nothing wrong with it, you know, or if you want to make a super soil or if you want to grow synthetically in cocoa or DWC and like, man, it's just whatever, whatever you like, you know, whatever flips your skirt floats your boat and tickles your taint you know what i mean hey you know what the, you know what it kind of reminds me of it, it's just like anything else but when i first started growing in i did not know that there was like this thing about photos and autos and like there were certain people that were just like die hard like you know to me hey i don't care how you grow you know what hey i'm gonna like your plan if i'm on there and i'm checking out and i try to and it's hard it's hard to 
go back a lot of people and look at their yeah. stuff. But it's, I mean, dude, there's nothing but progression amongst a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that's the thing. I do try to help when people come and if they ask me if I know that answer, I will try to answer it. But if I don't, I will point them in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people out there with a lot of knowledge and they're willing to give it up. Yeah, that's what's great about being a grower in our day and age, man, is we've got the internet at our fingertips, podcasts, lives, YouTube, like just books, you know, ebooks, audio books, Instagram, like there, there's just, dude, if you want to learn to grow, like it's out there, man, there's so many different areas that you can tap into, you just got to kind of connect with what with what strikes you with what strikes your nerve in a positive way, I guess, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's all good though, man. It's an awesome plant dude, you know, and, uh, it's doing a lot of things for a lot of people and it's, there's a community of people like that you and I are a part of. It's just cool. I like the whole thing, dude. I like the, I like the social aspect of it, everything that surrounds it. It's just really cool. Hey, dude, I don't see a lot of negative. I, you know, very few and far in between. Uh, yeah, you're going to see some hate here and there, and that's all right. Whatever. You know, there's jealousy amongst the troops, but it is what it is. But, you know, you just you move on. Uh, for me, that's the best thing, um, being able to interact. Mm-hmm. Like before, if you would have asked me here about three or, well, I'd say about two months ago to come on here, I probably would have been like, uh, 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 I don't know about that. Yeah, that's okay, um, man. So I, 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 you know, my shout out to the Auto Flower Show, you know, because of when they do the classes, I did a show and tell, and mm-hmm. it like unleashed a few things. So it's like you know, I want to come on here and talk about what I'm doing. Uh, I may not sound like I know what I'm doing all the time because I'm not supposed to know what I'm doing all the time, and I'm cool with that. I don't give a fuck. You know, it's like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'm gonna burn plants. I, or, you know, maybe not now, but I'm gonna do something stupid. Yeah. Know? Anyone who says that they've got it all together and have no need to learn anymore is full of caca de toro, in my <laughs> opinion. I sometimes just do shit to my plants too, though, just to see what how they react. Uh, because it's like learning how to try to super crop sometimes. Uh, I started getting those little clips just to make it easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've learned a lot. I will probably try to either use those clips more in the future. That's another good little object. And, and I'm still learning how to get my light to get a decent stretch on my plants. But you know what? I like my plants how they are right now. They're, they're trucking. Good, man. As but yeah, I, as long as you're happy. Hey, I, and that's the whole thing to it too. You know, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. It's I just want to get really good at it. Mm-hmm. So then that way I know the meds I'm getting. I don't have to go up here to this dumbass dispensary when I can do the same thing for cheaper than going and buying, you know, five to ten grams. So I mean, when it's all said and done, yeah, it's a it's the quality is going to be just as good. Yeah, that you make a good point, man. <clears throat> and that's, you know, the reason that a lot of us even started growing is, is just because of, you know, the cost of, of paying for it, you know, weekly, monthly, or whatever, however much that, you know, you consume. Either way, even if it's just once a week, I mean, you know, you save so much money, you can grow for, for, for cheap. I mean, dude, you could totally grow for cheap. You don't have to have a tent, especially if you're growing auto flowers like you don't have to have a tent um you know you can grow outdoors you can grow in a greenhouse you can grow you know under some cheap cheesy led light you can grow under cl cfl bulbs man you can grow under fluorescence i mean you can you don't have to go out and buy all the top-notch stuff you know what i mean um you could you could if you want to get really crazy like with kind of the avenue that i'm beginning to go down is like you know starting to like save my food scraps starting to compost i want to get a worm bin going again i had one but they all died um and the way to do the way to learn like i said is just just to start doing it man you know so i'm starting i've started doing that again i've started 
you know, saving like eggshells and food scraps and all of my clippings and plants, you know, trimmings and leaves and stuff like that. I, I started collecting it and I'm going to get a compost bin going again. But dude, if you can make like your own compost, if you make your own worm castings, if you can, you know, if you're into do it yourself type of stuff and you got the time and you want to make it fun, then dude, you could, you could grow for super cheap. Um, but you can, you know, or you can, you can go the route that you're going, um, and, you know, spend a little bit of money and, and get a solid product and have it still be organic. There's just so many options out there. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I've had people, they warned me like when I got, because apparently they, they had used it and, you know, I do take heat. I do listen, but then in the final, I'm just, I have to look at, you know, how, what's it, how is it going to be discreet? That was the biggest thing, discretion. Um, where I live, I just got to make sure I don't like to have stuff anywhere around my kids or wife. I try to keep it just down low. Anything I do is during the day when everybody's gone. And it's just, you know, and then, yeah, I can walk out the door and have a box and nobody knows. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I, I do want to try to do a compost. Uh, I would like to try that. I do. There's a lot of different ways I want to try. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm limited. So I, I'm excited with what I got though. That's awesome, dude. I, I can't complain. I'm, I'm fortunate. Yeah. Well, I sure do appreciate you coming on and sharing your grow method organically and but with bottled organic nutrients, that foop stuff. I'm going to check it out and, uh, maybe even reach out to them and see if they want to come on and chat about their product and what's in dude, it. They, and all that, stuff. that would be awesome, dude. Hey, they would be the ones that could really break it down. I'm just, like I said, You're just using I'm it. a grower. I ran across a product. I think it's badass and, and it's worth a try. It's if, I'm sorry. I know there's people say, Oh, OMRI listed. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Hey, but it, apparently it is. If it is, I mean, it is. It's what it says. So I'm going to try that. And it works for me. You know, uh, the microbes from MBX grows, another good product. Uh, my girls look like they're on steroids when they're in veg. And as soon as I hit them four hours after I feed them with that, the microbes, it's just nuts. So, you know, it's another great product and general hydroponics, their Cali mag and their VH up and down. I, you know, love that stuff too. It all, it all comes together. You know, mm-hmm. I, I just found the right key for my situation and for what my plants want. And I, I, I won't change it. And I'll, I'll wait and see how this next one goes. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be even better than this one. Because now that I have just that extra, you know, few months experience. That's awesome, dude. But I, pre- I appreciate you having me on though, bro. Hey, That's dude, awesome. can, I give, can I give a shout out to a few people? Absolutely. Dude, I, I want to shout out to everybody that's in my garden right now. Uh, I got at Pinehurst. Uh, I got two of his poop dollars and a hika. I got fire buds in there, uh, fire buds genetics. I got two of the dumpster punch in there, which man, frost. Oh, beautiful. I got uh, two mass medicals in there, which is uh, indigo grapes, which is a beautiful purple flower. Uh, can't wait to post some more of those pics because she's really just getting dark. And then uh, I got a golden food chain, which, you know, that's pretty badass uh, plant. And then I have two alien orange gum from Alan Beckenauer. So I want to give them guys a shout out because their genetics, it's freaking odd. They were easy to grow. Oh, good. Yeah, well, and, that probably has a lot to do with why your plants look so great as well. Oh, the genetics are killer. Um, all these guys, you know, they're working hard and that I got to give them their due and yeah, just getting to run their gear is just like <laughs> awesome. That's cool, man. And I do have to give a shout out to food. Hey, I, they don't sponsor me. I have no sponsors. I don't go out and knock it at everybody's door saying, Hey, you want to sponsor me? I do what I can with what I have. And I, mm-hmm. I just, you know, I love my grows and I hope everybody else gets to love them too. Though. Absolutely, Shout out to everybody man. out there, man. Yeah. yeah, dude. Thanks. Thank you so much, man. All right, brother, man. Thank you, man. Have a good one, bro. All right, bro. You too. Right. Well, thank you so much for listening all the way until the end. In fact, if you're still here with me, then you must really like the podcast. And if that's the case, could I ask you to do me a huge favor 
and go rate and review it on whatever platform you're listening on. Or if you're watching on YouTube, could you hit the thumbs up and leave a comment and uh, let me know what you thought about the episode. It really helps the podcast reach more growers and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Be sure to follow Napier8150 on Instagram. The link is in the show notes. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Much love to you all and happy growing. See ya. Nicotine, alcohol, good drugs. Coincidentally, tax drugs. Ooh, how does this fucking work? The dried leaves and berries are ground up and made into cigarettes by a simple hand machine. The deadly narcotic is thus quickly and easily prepared for its market. The sale of marijuana is even more difficult to detect and halt than the traffic in drugs such as opium, morphine, and heroin.